G'day everyone, welcome to PsyQ here on the TYT Network. Now at PsyQ, we're gonna bring you the science, the facts, the truth behind the big news stories of the week. No alternative facts in sight. We've waded through all the bull, distilled all the data, so you don't have to. Welcome to the show, my co-host and fourth favorite shirtless volleyball player, it's David Alfano. <laughs> How many do you know? I know four. Now, boy, what a big week it has been in facts. We've got a big new show for you tonight with the US midterm elections coming up, which as we know is every fact checker's favorite time of year. We've got news about big cities that are running out of drinking water, and even a story about the true average penis size. Who doesn't like a good schlong story, David? I like all penis stories. But before we get to all of that, let's have a look at the big science news of the week. We begin with the news that everything on Earth is currently dying and there's not enough cash to save it all. Now, given how buggered the planet is and the ever smaller amounts of money that this administration is allocating to the environment, conservationists are now trying a new approach called biodiversity triage. Now, as we know, triage, for those of you who don't watch Grey's Anatomy, is when there's been a big mass casualty incident like a bombing and we have to sort out the casualties so we can treat them all. So we go, oh, you guys, you're the walking wounded, you're fine, we'll deal with you later. Uh, you guys, you're the seriously injured, uh, we can treat you. You guys, you're very seriously injured. We don't have enough resources today to treat you, so we're just gonna let you die. So biodiversity triage is when we work out which species might actually be saved and we just let the rest die out. And since we can't start biodiversity triage with killing off all the incompetent Republican congressmen, I vote that we start with the emu because those guys are selfish wankers. That's right, emus, I'm on to you. You know that emus can be six foot two, yeah, the that's beady a, eyes. That's upsetting. They shouldn't be getting more matches on Tinder than I am. <laughs> that's very upsetting. They're about as likable as Ted Cruz. Yeah, well, we'll get to that later. Now, of course, this is <clears> the big <throat> inspirational story of the week. Yes, I, I, it's my favorite feel-good story of the week. Uh, I, for one, don't want this administration choosing which animals live and which die. I mean, these are the people that have chosen Ted Cruz. Uh, they've, I mean, these are the people that have chosen Steve Bannon. Um, Betsy DeVos, Rudy Giuliani, they brought that species back from the dead. How do you reckon they're going to choose which species survive and which ones die? Uh, the ones that are the most loyal to Trump, maybe? The ones or with the deepest pockets. Deepest pockets, the sexiest. I yeah, think I can imagine like Miss Biodiversity America and they pick the hottest species. Yeah, they all have their it. own sashes. Yeah, so if you're a lynx or an antelope out there, you, you know, gonna be fine. But all amphibians, gone. You're a bonobo. You're out of here. Yeah. Moving now to our second story, the EPA. That once great organization that's now dedicated to reminding you that witches control the weather and that seasons equal climate change. Now, the EPA has just released a proposal to roll back uh, rules on methane. Now, we know the Trump administration usually doesn't like leaks of any kind, but in this case, Trump wants to relax laws to save costs for the oil industry and allow way more methane to leak into the air. Now, famous for being the main component of farts, methane is also a greenhouse gas. In fact, it's 80 times more potent than carbon dioxide for warming up the planet. And the EPA itself has admitted that the change would degrade air quality and adversely affect health. At least they're honest about it. Uh, I think the EPA's new policy is just la 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 clean coal la 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 like that's where we're yeah, at. If now there's this point. one thing you're going to relax laws on, why methane? Like it's stinky. It's going to make like we pulled out of the Paris Climate Accord. True. That's like bad enough. But you know, why make it even worse? Insult than it to injury. Is? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Trump administration. I hear they're also going to start cutting down on production of silver and garlic to make sure they can keep vampires like Stephen Miller alive. <laughs> Dig. It's a dig. Now, while the EPA is busy rolling back regulation to make air pollution fun and easy, a new study published by the National Academy of Sciences has found air pollution can make you dumber, stupider, more stupid, whatever. Researchers have looked into the performance of 20,000 Chinese citizens as they took language and numeracy tests, and they correlated this with the levels of air pollution at the time. They found that high pollution was linked to a significant drop in test scores, the average impact was the same as having lost a year of education. There are easier ways to lose a year of your education. 
Like, stick to the classics. Drinking. Drinking, America's favorite pastime. Have a beer, China. You could look at Ann Coulter's Twitter feed for a few minutes. I find that kills off brain cells quickly. Quickly, painfully. But, but yeah, not quickly. easily. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, we all know that there's no hope for humanity when even China is bad at math. Moderately racist. It's a stereotype. Not untrue. Yeah. Uh, they're very smart. Well, I should say, not bad at math. Worse at math than America, which right. is... which is... Yeah, everyone, uh, everyone can everyone. claim to be good at math right. when they're true. comparing to America. That is not lie. Now, finally, speaking of math, how do you measure the average man? One old fella at a time, apparently. Scientists may have found the answer to how big is the average penis. Many earlier studies of penis size have looked into this question, and shockingly, when the data was self-reported, men tended to overestimate themselves. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but a new study has only used data where the penis has been measured by a clinician using a standard measuring procedure and not what was listed on the bloke's Tinder profile. Now, for this study, over 15,000 men volunteered to be measured. There were so many dicks there, you'd think it was the White House. They calculated the average penis size of, drumroll please, it was 3.8 inches for the average flaccid penis and 5.2 inches for the average erect penis. Good now, news. Upon release of the study, men around the world released a statement saying that the exam room was cold at the time and their girlfriends <laughs> totally agreed with them. That's true. I, I Thinking about this story, I can't stop thinking about the poor clinicians that did this. Like, how far down the medical ladder do you fall when you have to measure penises all day when long? that's your job. It's not the best. The study did say that after measuring 15,000 penises, the clinicians had stiff necks. Oh. <laughs> and the critics of the study have said that the data was soft. I've heard these things. <laughs> I've heard these things. Uh, and also, I'm sorry, I'm going back to the clinicians again. Is it worse that you have to measure the erect penises? In a room where some guy's like, uh -huh, happy about it, or measuring flaccid penises? Because we can all agree there's nothing less attractive than a flaccid penis. What I find most surprising about this story is that 15,000 men were willing to volunteer to have their dicks measured, uh, but none of them were willing to look for the G-spot. <laughs> they were very busy, being very insecure. Now, critics of the study say that it lacks hard data, and participants of the study says that the data was unreliable, flimsy, and soft. Wow. Which is literally true. <laughs> it is very soft. It's true. Ugh. All right. Well, that's it for science news. Coming up next, is water the new oil? We'll be right back after the break. Hi, everyone. I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching SciQ, and we know you don't want to miss an episode. So please click the subscribe button down below.